Imagine a young man who wants to be successful with his very own app. And to make it easy, we'll name him Larry. However, every time Larry was about to develop his app, he found an excuse to back away from it and continue his boring job at the office. Time passes and after a year, he decides to give his app another go. But this time, he comes across another problem because he's now wondering if his app will be popular at all. He doesn't think his app will ever be successful and lose the motivation to continue developing it. As a result, he waits another year before touching his app again. But by now, the very same idea he had before is now published to the app store as one of the top 100 apps. Larry now drops his app idea altogether because he sees no point in trying to publish anything else and resume the life he didn't like before. Like Larry, people struggle with following through with the ideas and what they want to do every day. They doubt themselves time after time and wonder if it's possible to reach the heights they want to go to. But in the arts of taking action, there are practical tips to overcome those types of obstacles life gives us and get things done. The first is to accept the situation, know what's in your control, and take action. A mistake Larry made was assuming that since he enjoyed creating apps, it was going to be easy to follow his passion. But on the days he felt tired and bored, he took it as a negative sign that he wasn't interested in it. And as a result, he stopped working on his app altogether and resumed his boring life. But a mistake we all make is assuming that there's no discomfort associated with anything we enjoy doing. We never think of the negative emotions associated with chasing after our passions. And when we do approach those negative emotions, we make the assumption we're not really into those passions to begin with. But as much as we like to change our attitude from negative to positive upon any situation, our emotions don't work like that. It would be like trying to reverse the flow of a river going downstream. Instead, the practical approach is to accept your emotions and do something regardless. I enjoy writing, but I don't get super excited every time I get on my computer. There's days where I feel too lazy to write anything. But if I begin with just one sentence, I know I could write another one and another one after that. And the more I continue this pattern, the easier it is to escape my old emotional state and get into a new one where I felt more motivated. So don't be dependent on your emotions when you want to accomplish something, or else you'll overthink what the right answer can be and procrastinate on what to do next. Instead, focus on what needs to be done, why it needs to be done, and take action. You may not have complete control over your emotions, but you can control your behavior and the actions you take. So focus on your efforts and what you can do this very second that will get you into the motion you want to be in. And the second is to just take the next step. A mistake Larry made was viewing his life as a game of chess, and when it was his turn, he anticipated a whole string of moves based on developing his app. He questioned who would use his app, how many people would download it, and how much money he could make from it. Before he even finished his prototype, he already conjured a thousand scenarios on what could go wrong. But as humans, we can't predict the future on how we're going to get from point A to point B. Because when we want to take the road to success, what often stops us is worrying about all the tiny pebbles that might get in the way. And when we imagine every negative possibility that can happen to us in the future, we're then discouraged from even attempting to follow our dreams. Which is why people stop working on their business when they see no customers within the first two months. It's why people give up writing after three rejections. But a rule of thumb to go by is that it takes a step by step approach to acquire anything we want. Such as how you can't teleport to the other side of the room we can't teleport to the place we want to be at while taking one step at a time. There's no reason to overthink on what should happen on the fifth step. If you come across an obstacle, you deal with that situation by stepping over it. You may not have expected it, but you always deal with it when it does happen. And with every step you take, be proud of it. See it as a new opportunity to grow wiser and become more independent because you're getting real life stats based on how well you're doing. Anyone can think on what needs to be done but that does nothing for them in the long run. The person who takes action by turning their thoughts into a reality are the people who get stuff done. Think of it like this. Would you rather want the chef who needs to think for three hours on how he's going to cook your meal or the chef who can prepare your meal in under 30 minutes? In the end, focus on the tiny improvements that will eventually lead to what you want to accomplish. A healthy way to lose weight can't be done in the course of a day or a week. It takes baby steps of eating healthier and being physically active that gives you the long-term results you want. Sure, you might mess up occasionally by eating junk food or forgetting to exercise, but you don't let those days discourage you from continuing on. 
you continue moving forward until you reach the results you want. And that's the art of taking action by Greg Crack. Hey guys, have any books you recommend or are interested in seeing in the future? Be sure to leave a comment and subscribe.